the logic behind our risk assessment. So first of all, the first question you need to ask yourself is, is there a functional relationship between a certain material attribute or process parameter and a critical quality attribute? So for example, if you say, you know that you have a, an API which has poor solubility. And now you go through your list and you say, okay, particle size distribution of this API, has this an impact on dissolution? And you will say, okay, mm, yes, uh, either I already have data or I can suspect it because this is typically the case for poorly soluble compounds. And then you get, go that route and say, okay, I know it or I suspect it. You ask yourself a second question is, do I understand this phenomenon and can I control it? And if, if you have already data at hand and say, okay, the dissolution properties are fine. If I have a particle size distribution of whatever, 10 to 50 micron, and I control this uh, by raw material testing, then you're here, green. I have understanding, I have a control option, it's green. If you don't have this data, you need to do an experiment in order to find out what is your appropriate process or material attribute specification and control option. But then this, in, this traffic light approach gives you some kind of an orientation, um, what you have already done and achieved and where you need to work on. And there may be others. So for example, the particle size distribution of your API, uh, appearance is also a um, quality attribute. If you say, well, it's white, it will never ever have uh, an impact because it's white uh, and the rest of the tablet is also white. So then you say there is no functional relationship uh, for a certain material attribute or process parameter on a quality attribute and you go this route. So it's as simple as that.